right, Mike coming at you with another Planet Coaster Park Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the video and welcome to World Nations, created by Kenyon85. Now, today's park is a PlayStation 5 park. And as always, if you do enjoy this type of content, then please make sure to leave a like, leave a subscribe if you are new and leave a comment down below. And if you would like to have your park spotlighted, then the Discord link will be up in that top corner right now. The Iron Game is where you can request a park spotlight. Now, the description for this park reads, This is a recreation of a PC park, World Nation Studios, with different country sections. It has 10 flat rides, 5 coasters, a gondola, 1 dark ride, and 3 hotels, of which 1 is inside a horror heights. So, yeah, without further ado, let's hop in and have a look around this park, shall we? Right, so here we are at the park entrance. So let's hop through the ticket booth. So parking tickets. There you go. I'll grab a parking ticket. And we come through to this big open car park. Always love to see it. I like this, what you've done in the centre. Just here. I like this, how you can walk down through the middle. Now, I'm not familiar with the PC counterpart of this park. So I'm not sure how much of a direct copy this is which does make it a little bit more tricky to do a spotlight because i'm not sure what's original what's not what's copied what's original so you'll have to bear with me in this spotlight and i will just i'll treat it like any normal spotlight but apologies to the original creative i'm saying that's amazing and that looks fantastic and it's just a direct copy of somebody else's unfortunately like i said i'm not familiar with the pc counterpart of this park well, we've got all these planters just before you come into the park. That is thousands of plants all down here. Just make sure you rotate them all. Maybe just put some at differing heights as well because it does... It's, as you look down here, it doesn't look natural because they're all facing the same way. Whenever you're placing any kind of foliage, just make sure you're rotating. Make sure you put them at different heights and it will really make it look so much more natural. And... If I'm being honest, I would actually be tempted to get rid of probably over half of that. If I'm being honest, I would actually get rid of the majority of that. Keep some in, but just use some paint tool just to go around it. I think it would make it look a lot more natural. And it'd give you more piece count back again. If you wanted to come back and add more to the park. Well, let's get some tickets and let's come through, shall we? Because look at the same down this side. There must be... What? I wonder if I can click on them. I wonder if I can click. Is it all one piece? No, it's not all one piece. Hang on. If I can just try and grab these only. See, look how much piece count that is. And then... You've got cars on there right so you you've actually got normal cars that you can put down rather than the animatronics which may actually help you with percentage so rather than using the cars that are on a track just use the cars that are in the studios pack but yeah as we look here that's 1059 pieces just for that one planter you could trim that down to under a hundred if I'm being honest, and make it look nice still, just using the paint tool. Use things less is more. Always use less is more, and that will help you around the rest of the park to add a few more details. Something I did notice when I was getting the cinematic shots earlier on is maybe some areas of the park could have done with a little bit more detail. But we'll get into that as we go around. So let's come through, shall we? So we have the World and Nation Park. I love this entrance. Love this entrance. Right, let's come through, shall we? I mean, this is beautiful. The lighting is sensational. We've got all the music all around us. No background music. We can listen to the sounds of the park. So we have this Venice-style area. Somewhere I've always wanted to go is Venice. Never been. Would love to go. So what have we got over here? So we have the Delixi Tuscany. Whether I said that right or not, I don't know. Chances are, it's me. I probably didn't. Nice little interior just there. I love the feel of this. I love all the music 
all around here. And that shot right there was absolutely sensational. We've got a coaster just in the background. We've got this Venetian carousel. Love all the theming all around here. Wow. Right, let's come over the bridge. All the buildings around here are so well done. All different, all trimmed really well. We've got an ice cream shop just here. Oh no, not really, it's not a shop. It's block toilets and then with an ice cream vending machine. And we'll go with it. We have Munchaw Frites. We go over another bridge, over the canal again. And are we coming to our first ride of the park? It certainly looks that way. Looks like we're coming to that coaster. So we have the Pass Prietario. I've most likely just said that completely wrong. I'm just going to give up. I'm not even going to try and say the names of these things because I'm just going to say them wrong. So there's the exit there for the ride. Ah, here we go. So we have the Forza Hyper Coaster. Well, let's have a look up this queue line. Oh, this is fantastic. Really nicely done. Very immersive. Love that shot where you can see the Ferris wheel just in the background. And we come up to the station. Look at the shot that this station gives. Such a good sight line. Right, let's have a look at the stats for this then, shall we? So what have we got here? So it's a Anubis hyper coaster. So that is a Giabola hyper roller coaster. There we go. Matty is learning. Not quite green across the board. Them G-forces are very high though. Very high. That's you're pulling kind of like G-forces that a Formula One car would pull. So quite high, but let's go for a ride. First ride of the park. Let's do it. Enjoy everybody. So there we have Forza Hypercoaster, our first ride of the park. Unfortunately, I am going to say that ride does require quite a lot of work, I'm afraid. For a couple of reasons. I think the whole ride is too high off the floor. It just felt very elevated, the entire 
time there wasn't really much going on around the ride in the sense of things that you could look at maybe even if you were to bring the terrain up a little bit higher around it so it's like hugging the terrain a little bit more and then the coaster itself needs quite a lot of smoothing i think it needs a lot of banking i think that is part of the problem so as it comes down here all of this here needs just smoothing out just leveling out a little bit more and then as we come around here I think this is where some of the g-forces would have started coming from so as you come down here just smooth this out so it's just one nice smooth drop and then then bank that round to the left because it just very quickly throws you to the left so anytime you're going into any kind of corner any kind of left or right turn just put a little bit more banking in them so it just transitions into them corners a little bit smoother and then go around the entire ride and just smooth 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 all the way around from start to finish and i think that would have really helped a lot it would have brought them g forces down and like i say just maybe just bring the terrain up a little bit so it's hugging the terrain slightly maybe a water feature around here or something is that the all oh, right I, was, I thought the actual coaster went past the build limit i was like how have you done that but it's just the supports that are going past i was gonna say that blew my mind then i was like how have you done that broken the game and the same here, just have this coming down, bank this ever so slightly to the left, and then you can have it then bank slowly into the right. And then I just think it would just bring them G-forces down, make the whole ride run a lot smoother. But, yeah. I hate giving feedback like that. I feel so bad, I'm sorry. But it's beautifully themed all around it. All around here, all around the station. I love all the theming, just the coaster needed work was all. So let's come back over the bridge. And let's walk over the other side, which I believe has a dark ride in here somewhere. Can we find the entrance for the dark ride? So let's come down here. Ah, this must be it. I'll, I'm in love with this lighting. So good. Right, let's have a look up here. I'm not even sure what dark ride it is, if I'm being honest. I just... It's a... If we have a look from above... I'm assuming it's a dark ride. I'm assuming that's what it must be. So, let's have a look. Oh, look at this queue path. There's nothing wrong with your queue lines, that's for certain. So well themed. Right, so, let's jump on the second ride of the park. This dark ride, enjoy!
so there we have the Lamaginarium. Yeah, really nice dark ride. I thought maybe the first 40 seconds or so, the first two rooms could have maybe done with a slightly little bit more detail. But as the ride went on, the triggered effects and the set pieces were really good. So, yeah, good job. Right, let's carry on, shall we? I believe we start leaving the Venice area now. I love this building just to our right. All the detailing on that. That is fantastic. That's a beautiful building. Does this just take us back down towards the main entrance again? It does indeed. And then we've got the Ferris wheel just to our right. All the buildings are done so well. And I absolutely love this lighting. The lighting is probably the standout thing of the park to me right now. The lighting and the architecture. We have the Screaminator. So the Sun Tower Tile. Sun Tower Dial Type Drop Thingy. And as we come back up here, we've got a teacups. Nicely themed all around here, just with all the foliage. We won't go over that bridge. We'll go around the other way. This feels more like London. Now I wonder if that's what this is. Around here. Ah, we have a red telephone box. Yes, this must be London. In this area. Alright, we'll walk up to the waterfront. So I can see the Asian area off in the distance. Right. Let's just have a quick zoom out a second. Right. And that is probably the only way we can go. So let's come over this bridge. It would have been nice to see more detailing around here. If I'm being completely honest, with all that plant work at the start that I think you could have reduced, I would even be tempted to get rid of that first coaster. I'm not going to lie. Get back as much percentage as you can and just detail more. Maybe kind of like bring these areas in so they transition a little bit better, potentially, because you have got some blank areas around the park. Because this is a long walkway with not really much going on around, especially the back of that building. It would be nice to just hide the back of the building with some trees or foliage or even terrain rock work anything like that we've got all this rock work just to our right again just the same with the foliage just remember to rotate them as well i am being savage this spotlight i'm so sorry i need a cup of tea whenever i'm getting grouchy and irritable and start like critiquing a park it's because i normally need a cup of tea or something well, let's come down here. There's a lot of things in this park that I am loving. Don't get me wrong. There really is. But there's also a lot that I'm looking at and think could do with addressing at the same time. Right, so we have a coaster just to our left that we'll have a look at in a second and then we have the terror tower right in front of us so this must be the american area let's have a look inside here shall we see the thing is your theming is spot on the theming is so good i think it is just a uh, less is more Maybe take some things away so you can add more detail in other areas. Right. I don't know what this is. You've got to assume it's a Tower of Terror ride. I love your queue lines. The queue lines are so well themed. Yep, it is indeed. Right, so let's go for a ride on this one then, shall we? Enjoy!
that was my favorite ride of the park so far some really nice set pieces in there some great triggered effects yep i enjoyed that right let's hop over is this interior being done it has i like this interior very colorful right let's come over to the coaster shall we so we've got this custom bridge just coming over And let's come down to this coaster down here. Right, so what is this? So an inverted two-seater bearer, so another Giovanola inverted roller coaster. Let's have a look at the stats for this one. Not quite green across the board. G-force is even higher than the last one. So let's go for a ride. Enjoy everyone. A lot of the feedback that I had for the first coaster is still going to be applicable to this one, I'm afraid. Again, I feel it's too high off the ground with not really much going on around it. The whole ride did need smoothing again. And just the same as the first one, just the way that you're going in and out of the corners, just use the banking to your advantage to really make it feel smoother. I could almost do without these two coasters on this side of the park, if I'm being honest. I would I would be tempted to get rid of both of them coasters, do away with this side of the park, and then just lean into your strengths, which is your detailing of the buildings. It almost makes me think of Dixieland, the park that I live spotlighted recently. If you're familiar with that park, Kenyon, that park has mostly got flat rides and then only two coasters i would be tempted to lean more into that really lean into your strengths of detailing around the areas and maybe not so much focus on the coasters because for me dixieland was one of the best parks of the entire year and it had barely any coasters in it you don't always need to lean into the coasters to make a park especially when you're so talented uh, doing all these areas and the buildings and the architecture and the lighting I'd be more than happy if I was walking around this entire park and exploring everything and then we only had one coaster to go on I'd still be content I'd still be extremely happy with everything that I'd seen because unfortunately the coasters right now are what is pulling the park down so yeah we'll carry on I wonder how many subs I'm gonna lose for this video Matt you're so harsh you're so critical so, we've got a cable cars over there. What have we got here? The Canyon Loco. So, are we going straight to another coaster? We have a Basilisk. So, a Basilisk single rail coaster. Again, I, I love your paths. Your Q paths, they're so good. Right, and then let's come up here. And again, a nice, simple little station. Right, so let's have a look at the stats for this one. So, again, it's not green across the board. The G-forces are really nice on this one. There's some nice, realistic G-forces, so we're not killing people this time. And it also does two laps. So, let's go for a ride on this one, then, shall we? Enjoy.
that was easily easily the best coaster of the park so far if you were going to keep any coaster in the park keep this one because that was really good it did require a little bit of smoothing once again and again just with the banking it just i i don't i wonder if maybe when you created this park you didn't know how to do banking on a coaster because i don't think any of the rides that we've been on so far have had any banking at all i mean just as you come down here all of this here just needs banking round to the left so it comes around here again just that little bit smoother but yeah easily the ride of the park just remember to rotate some of them rocks a little bit but other than that great job i really enjoyed that one and it was a basilisk coaster which i don't like normally so yeah great job right let's come out of here well i called the mexican like i don't know what they're called like the mexican skulls i can never remember what they're called but i like how they're hanging off the tree I'm sure somebody will let me know what they're called. So we've just got some more shops. A nice wide path coming down. Oh, there's the Sun Tower dial type drop thing. So that's that's the one I was thinking of, not the other one. The other one was just a drop tower type thing. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> right, let's come down here. Your attractions are so high up. The two coasters on the other side of the park and then the cable cars are also really high up. And then the wooden coaster, again, is really high. I wonder if you've gone just a little bit too elevated with this park in places, potentially. Now we've got a magic carpet ride. That's a fantastic skin. I love the queue line. Looks like the um, Punjabi prison match from WWE or something. Or more like a steel cage, never mind. But I love this queue line. Really nice theming around this flat ride. And what have we got here? So we have the Aslaya Hotel. Oh, I thought there was a water feature over here. No, there's not. It's just watering the grass. I do like this area. Alright, and as we come through, we come through to the, I believe, the final area of the park. The Asian area. So we've still got that wooden coaster to our left. That might be a different themed area, actually. We'll have a look in a second. So let's come through here. Oh, this is beautiful. So we've just got the Bacoma family coaster in front of us, the kiddie coaster. Is it the dragon or is it the Wendigo? You've got to assume it's got to be the dragon for the area. Let's have a look, shall we? This is beautifully themed all around here. So where is the queue line for that then? I thought that might have been it, but it wasn't. Let's come back around this way a little bit. Ah, so King Long. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> right, really nice queue line, really nice station. So let's have a look at the stats for this then, shall we? So, of course, it's not green across the board. The G-forces are actually relatively high for a kiddie coaster. But let's go for a ride. Enjoy, everyone.
a really nice coaster once again it did require a little bit of smoothing once again just addressing them banking issues but the theming around the ride was probably my favorite of the entire park so far i really enjoyed that so yeah great job right so let's hop out of here and we come down to the final area of the park so we've got a little seating area just there And let's come down to here. So this looks more like a alpine themed area, more like kind of the Swiss Alps or something like that, like a Eastern European, maybe German or something. We'll come back to that coaster in a second. We'll save the coaster till the very end. We'll just go around this area. Oh, what's this? I don't know what that is. Oh, we've got a Swift Drifters just inside a little library. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, nice little flat ride skin. Another great flat ride skin just with the waterfall just behind it. And what's around here? Ah, this is the station for the cable cars. And then we have the final hotel, the third and final hotel, the De La Cruz Hotel. Very nice. Right, let's head back to that coaster, shall we? Oh, we've got another flat ride just in front of us, nicely hidden away. Right, let's come back to this wooden coaster. Is this a wooden GCI? Oh, go through the trees. No one saw a thing. Looks like a GCI. So we have the Brulen van Brian. Brulen, Brulen van Bayern? I've said that wrong. I know I have. I'm sorry. Sorry. Right. Let's have a look for the final coaster then. So green across the board. And the G-Force is really good as well. So hopefully we've saved the best coaster till the very end. Let's do it. Enjoy. So we really did save the best ride of the park till the very end. Yeah, I think that was really well done. It could have done with some smoothing once again, mostly as it goes in and out of the corners, which all the corners have banking on this coaster, which was nice to see. I do feel that the coaster was slightly too high, if I'm being honest. I think of all the coasters in the park, this is the one that would have benefited the most from being a terrain coaster. Pull up all the terrain underneath it and have it so it's hugging the terrain. The only real massive critique of the ride I've got was just this one very last bit here. What what was that there? I almost felt like we were going to take off the tracks and fly into the building. Just smooth that out there and then have this entire section here as a brake run just as it comes into the station. I mean, if we watch it come round... Oh, it's not quite here yet. Come on. It looks like it's going to take off and hit the building. Here we go. Get out of the way, tree! Yeah, just that bump there. It genuinely looks like it's going to take off. So just level that out, put a brake run there. Yeah, great job. So, I believe that is 
the entire park. If we just head over here, yeah, this is where we were, and then there's the bridge that brings us back over towards the London area. So that must be London Bridge then. Yeah, a really nice park. It's it's a little bit of a tricky one, if I'm being honest. Because for, the, for me, this park, it had a lot of highs, but then also a lot of lows as well, unfortunately. I may have sounded overly critical, this spotlight, but with what you have done, I know you can do better. I would be very tempted to get rid of these two rides. I would get rid of both of them, and I'd also think about getting rid of the cable cars around the back. I just don't think it's needed. I don't think that cable cars is needed. I mean, hypothetically, hypothetically, if we delete that, that's down to 98%. If we would delete that, 94%. Delete that, 91%. You're down to 91%. And that 9%, I mean, also as well, you've got all these flowers that are down there that I think you can reduce. I mean, on both sides, you must be talking 2,000 plants there. So if you were able to reduce all of that, I think the amount of detail that you could add around the park would be absolutely insane. I, I think the coasters remaining, just a little bit of smoothing on them three coasters, and then just more bringing in the areas so they transition a little bit smoother because the areas do feel quite disjointed from each other especially with how long a walk you have to go between them especially like going up this long walkway and up and around the back of there maybe you could put something around here just to bring it all in a little bit but yeah apologies once again if this spotlight has seemed extremely critical don't get me wrong i absolutely love your architecture the Venice area and the London area were incredible. Absolutely incredible. The lighting is sensational. The queue line's fantastic. I just want to see more. I want to see more of that. Lean into your strengths, which is lighting, which is your architecture. And yeah, I would love to see your next park and what you do. But there we go. Let me just hide that hood. I think that's the longest I've ever had a hood on for a spotlight. But there we go. There is World Nations. So hopefully you've all enjoyed the spotlight. Let me know down below in the comments what you think. Have I been too overly critical this park? Am I just being critical for the sake of it? Maybe. Maybe I should just go and get a cup of tea and chill out. But thank you ever so much for watching everybody. Hopefully you haven't all unsubscribed and left a dislike on this video. I'm so sorry. But I'll be back tomorrow for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. Take care. Stay safe. Look after yourselves. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. Thank <laughs> you.